Hi there, thanks for joining us on TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. If you look up Hollywood Golden Age Studio Chief in the dictionary, you could make a strong case there ought to be a picture of Jack Warner next to the entry. With all due respect to Louis B. Mayer over at MGM or Daryl Zanuck at Fox or Harry Cohn at Columbia, I'm going with Jack Warner for a couple of reasons. One, Warner Brothers and TCM have been part of the same corporate family since 1996, and all month we're celebrating the studio's 100th anniversary. Two, and more importantly, I think Warner Brothers is the defining movie studio of Hollywood's golden age. MGM had the sizzle and the gloss, but Warner's had the grit, and I'll take grit over gloss any day. Born Jacob Leonard Wansel, the ninth child of Benjamin and Pearl Wansel, Russian Jewish immigrants, Jack Warner and his three brothers, Harry, Sam, and Albert, built their studio out of a keen business sense and a fascination with motion picture technology, which was then a burgeoning art form. Sam Warner pioneered the coming of sound, but Sam tragically died the night before their film, The Jazz Singer, premiered in 1927. Harry, the oldest and most conservative, served as company president in New York. Al handled distribution, while the rebellious, charismatic Jack ran studio productions in Hollywood, relishing every minute of it. Jack Warner epitomized every good and bad stereotype of his elite fraternity of movie moguls. Smart, ruthless, tight-fisted, egotistical, undoubtedly sexist. Quotes attributed to him tell the story of his reputation pretty well, like, I don't want it good, I want it Tuesday. He was also known to refer to his writers as schmucks with Underwoods. For our younger viewers, Underwoods were typewriters. For our even younger viewers, typewriters were laptops. Still, Warner also presided over the making of some of Hollywood's most enduring classics, including Casablanca, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, My Fair Lady, for which he won his only competitive Oscar as a producer, and Bonnie and Clyde. That's just to name a select few. Up next, a documentary that delves into Jack Warner's life and career. From 1993, this is the TCM premiere of Jack L. Warner, The Last Mogul. The title comes from Warner's status as the last studio boss to remain active producing films after the studio system collapsed. The film was produced, written, and directed by Warner's grandson, Gregory Orr. Orr is the son of actress Joy Page, who memorably played the newlywed in Casablanca, whose young husband, Helmut Danteen, is told by Humphrey Bogart to leave his money on 22. Page was Jack Warner's stepdaughter, her mother, actress Anne Boyar, was Warner's second wife. Despite their family connection, Orr does not pull any punches for his grandfather. As Variety laid out in its review, Orr includes Warner's womanizing, his capitulation to the House on American Activities Committee, as well as his betrayal of his brother Harry to become the sole head of Warner Brothers in the 1950s. All that said, there's no disputing Warner was steadfastly true to himself and his beliefs, and it's hard not to appreciate his drive and his nose for talent. From 1993, narrated by Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., Jack L. Warner, The Last Mogul.